a beautiful day here in Kornheim. It's almost in the 70s and there's not a cloud in the sky, which definitely gives you a good demonstration of what Midwest spring weather entails because just a few days ago we had one of the worst storm outbreaks in a long time here in the United States and it's interesting that like people from across the pond and in other parts of the world didn't know what we meant um, online when we were talking about outbreaks and it was tornado outbreaks because I guess they're just not as common in other parts of the globe but here in like you know just adjacent to what we call tornado alley in the states it's just kind of a regular part of life especially in the spring is when the weather is at its most volatile because we have that transition from cold air into warm air happening all up and down the country and thankfully Thor kept the twisters just north of us here where I live but we definitely had the sirens go off a couple times and I definitely came out here to his little makeshift outdoor altar and gave him some offerings afterwards and thank you. So here is our little indoor seedling starting setup. How's that for alliteration? So these plants are gonna be in here until it gets a little bit warmer outside. We have some tomatoes and some onions starting up here and then some butternut squash. I need to try and find some new seeds or start some more seeds of my spaghetti squash and zucchini because they're not taking off yet, but the seeds could just be old. And since this is Kornheim, we're trying our hand at growing some corn this year. But that also can't really go outdoors until it's a little bit warmer. So, so this is the setup for now. There's another corn that I'd put down on the lower shelves because it's getting so tall. There we go, little guy. And one thing that, one little piece of advice that I will share if you are doing this, especially when your seedlings are just starting out or for things like herbs or little sprouts or things like this, is a handy little tip you can do is to actually just like pet them while they're small. I mean, not only is it just cool to do, you know, from a pagan perspective, just, you know, actually get, get in touch with your plants, give them some pets, but no, it actually simulates the wind, the motions of the wind, um, just, you know, kind of petting them gently will make the stems grow stronger, because one thing that I often found myself running into trouble with was that my little sprouts and seedlings would get to a certain point or like a certain height and then they just would kind of fall over under their own weight and and wither and die but if you give them some little gentle pets to simulate the wind blowing them back and forth it will help them to grow stronger so let me show you what's going on outdoors and i know this is a very exciting empty plot of dirt here right now, but I thought it would be fun for this spring vlog to share our garden update progress. This raised bed is new, we just added it last year, and right now I have one little pea plant that I just transplanted from indoors, from the shelf indoors, and it's doing well even after being hit by the storms this past weekend. It's thriving. And I have a couple different types of, of radishes growing in here. So yeah, just mostly some early spring crops for right now, in case we do just get a little bit of cooler weather still. And I'm starting to finally see some little sprouts popping up. Here is some spinach. This is all just different spinach and lettuce mixes. Here on this end, just some different like cover crops that hopefully will grow in rather quickly before the other plants and weeds and grasses do. And the storms actually, I was kind of praying to Thor and Frere 
to just give our garden the watering that it really needed and not flood it. And thankfully they heard my prayers and did so because I hadn't really seen anything popping up until after that those rain and storms came through. And now today I'm finally seeing some lettuce mix popping up. I think you can see some over here too. And then this is all gonna be baby spinach, some bib lettuce. I'm not seeing any of that yet. I don't know what these are. And then here I have some daikon radish, which I think is finally starting to poke its little head up there. And I have some more peas planted down here that I just planted directly in the soil. So hopefully those will start coming up soon. So yeah, I'm excited to finally see some seedlings. <laughs> Hi, Shadow. And then this, this mound of stuff over here next to the garden bed is my Hugel culture experiment and I just saw a little pin about it on Pinterest and I thought it would be cool to try where you pile logs, rotting logs and things like that underneath and then like smaller branches and things on top of that and then straw and other yard waste on top of that. And then eventually this whole mound will be covered in soil and compost. And we will grow vegetables and things directly in it. And so my plan is to use all of our soil from our like container gardens that from previous years and recycle it and put it on top of here. And then this is like a bunch of just yeah, trimmed bushes and yard waste from from all over our yard here that I've gathered and just moved over here into a pile because it was already like just decomposing and breaking down where it was. So I figured why not move it over here and let it continue to do its thing in a way where we can actually recycle some of that material and put it to good use. And so I'm going to try to grow some summer squash and like vine, vine plants like that, um, like cucumbers and melon on this mound so that it can kind of hopefully act as a bit of a natural like trellis or support system for those plants and vines to grab onto. So I'll keep you posted on that as we continue to build it up and eventually try to grow things on it. And I just thought it would make for a fun, cool experiment and a way to just kind of move some of our yard waste out of the way without, and get some, some benefit back from it without just like throwing it away or leaving it somewhere to rot. This is kind of a purposeful um, way of layering that material so that you're putting the that decomposition to work for you in your garden because supposedly you know this will also act as its own composting pile as the material breaks down and provide nutrients to the growing plants and i also read that if you live um, in some of the more northern climates it will actually help you to be able to start plants outdoors earlier because um, it will warm the soil and provide heat as it breaks down and as the material decomposes underneath. So yeah, I just thought that was an interesting little fun thing that I just learned about. And I thought we would run a little experiment with it this year and see how it works. So stay tuned for that. Thank you. 
I did some spring cleaning this afternoon and I can see my back patio again. And I ended up working out because I'm trying to just repurpose all these different piles of yard waste into the Hugo culture mound experiment back there. So all of this dead grass will be, you know, straw now and can go over there. So this is the Hugel culture mound now. After a few weeks and some rain, it's definitely been kind of packed down a little bit from where it was at. I've just covered it with all of this dead grass that I found all over the yard. Got some peas coming up now, which is exciting trying to plant a bunch this year so that I can actually get a good amount of pea pods all ready to be picked at the same time so I can have enough, you know, worth actually making a meal or a snack out of. So we've got quite a few of those popping up now, which is awesome. And then over here are the daikon radishes. Finally starting to actually grow some separate leaves. Plant Watch 2023. It's only been a week or two since I last filmed these seedlings, but as you can see, they're really starting to take off here. This is the corn. It's gonna have to go outside soon. Squash. I'm gonna have to get some more zucchini seeds because those didn't sprout. And then these tomatoes are really starting to take off. So they're gonna have to go outside soon too. And then these onions are gonna have to be thinned out and transplanted outside here at some point. Crazy how fast everything is starting to grow now. Okay, and then back here is eventually going to be built up into a bigger outdoor store altar. It's kind of just like a little makeshift spot in the back corner of the yard for right now. And I had tried to like build up a little earth mound and cover it with some stones that we just pulled out of the garden and out of the soil. And then we have this stone or crystal carved bowl here that I leave his offerings in, but it's also become very compacted down and shrunken down by all the rain and whatnot. And now it's also covered in this beautiful like ground ivy, which is blossoming all over the back of my yard in these little pretty purple flowers. So I, I almost hate to disturb this little area for right now. But eventually the plan is to, to build the mound back up and kind of line it with with some stones so that I can, can place this back on top and kind of build it up more. And then it also kind of serves as an altar to his mother, Yord, with it just being outdoors and just kind of natural, which also made it rather beautiful to me that I came back here after the winter and it's now covered in all these pretty purple flowers for her. So since it's getting dark out, we might save this project for another day and kind of let these these flowers do their thing for a little bit and let our bees and our Freya friends partake of them before I go and and pull any more up or cover them with with any soil so stay tuned
Just like that, in the space of a few hours, we've gone from warm and bright and sunny to a definite storm rolling in. Thor is coming to collect his offering that I just put out on his newly rebuilt altar.